Hey everybody, this is Mike Marston again, and just going to do a quick video demonstrating uh, a little bit about how Unity Intercom and Unity Connect work together to send local program audio to a remote Unity server so that that program audio is available to the people local using Unity Intercom at the event. That, pro that sounded kind of confusing as I was saying it. Um, the scenario is this. In this graphic, I am showing a, an event in Japan, let's say. That's why the Unity inter, uh, Intercom icon is there in Japan. So the event is happening in Japan, but the team that is traveling there doesn't have access to port forwarding or reliable internet. Um, it's just going to be crazy. Uh, in this case, I've used, it's a, a qualifying surfing event. Um, people are doing their shots on the beach. It's, it's chaos. And so everyone's going to be using Unity Intercom. We've got great cellular coverage. So with Unity Intercom, everyone's going to be on their phones and they're going to be able to communicate to the camera crew. The director's going to be able to talk to them and they're going to be able to have local program audio that is happening in Japan, but in this case, the server is actually back in the United States. The server is in the United States in, let's say, Las Vegas, for example. It's on a, it's set up in a rack. It's in a stable networking environment, um, so it has a fixed IP address. The port forwarding rules say any intercom traffic coming in on port 20101 send it to this Mac computer. So what that means is the Unity Intercom users can be anywhere in the world, but that server is in a stable, non-moving location in the United States, and it's gonna be routing all the audio back to them. Now, that alone does not get you the program audio. See, the audio for this surfing event that I'm talking about is happening there in Japan. That's where that's where the event is taking place. So there, locally in Japan, what we have is a Mac computer connected via a I.O. box of some kind receiving program audio. It is not Unity Intercom server. It's Unity Connect. And Unity Connect is software running on a Mac computer. There is a, and I'll show you a graphic here in a minute. So there is um, audio getting brought in via XLR, maybe off a soundboard, into an I.O. device, and it is getting brought into the Unity server, uh, Unity Connect, that rather. So I'll kind of bring this up here. Here's a quick graphic to, to help maybe simplify things. So as I mentioned, the event is in Japan. This is a Mac computer, could be a MacBook Pro, could be a Mac Mini. Um, it's receiving local program audio. It is using Unity Connect to send, uh, in this case, a single stream, but it could be sending up to 64 streams of low latency broadcast ready audio. It's sending it back to the United States to a, another Mac computer running the Unity server, but more importantly, it's also running the Unity Connect software. The Unity Connect software is grabbing that audio it is, now remember, the, the Unity server, the, uh, the Mac computer is running the Unity server for Calm Audio. It's running Unity Connect, and it's also running the in-between software called Loopback. So I know this, it, it's, it, it's, it gets a little confusing. So the Unity Connect software is running on a Mac computer here in Las Vegas, for example. And that Connect software is grabbing the audio from Japan, it is sending it through a, a third-party software called Loopback. Loopback acts as a fake virtual device so that Unity server can grab Loopback as its audio device, thus taking all of the audio from Japan and injecting it into the program audio source, the program audio feed at the Unity server in Las Vegas, sending it back out to Japan. So people in Japan, the people there covering the event have the luxury of that local program audio as in addition to their comms. But what's happening is that audio is actually getting sent 
from Japan to America through Unity Connect, through the loopback software, injected into the Unity server, and then back out so that anybody in the world, um, you know, particularly the people, the local camera guys and stuff running around in Japan, have access to that program audio. Now, I'll show you more specifically how it's done. That was just a graphical overview. Okay, so now to get into specifics. Um, what I can't show you right now, I don't have access to, is this Mac computer here in Japan running Unity Connect. But I'll show you what it looks like. I don't have access to that right now, but it is broadcasting its feed to the states here, to the USA, um, using a different Unity Mac computer here for receiving it. I'll, uh, I'm going to fire that up and make sure this fits the screen here. So, I am uh, VNC'd into the computer that's doing all this. So, here is Unity Connect running on a Mac computer in Las Vegas. And it is set up, I've called it USA. So this is the Unity Connect product for those that are familiar with it. Um, in my remotes tab, I have Japan. So here is my connection to Japan. Now I don't know the IP address to, Jap to the Mac computer in Japan, um, but the, J the, the computer in Japan knows my IP address. So only one direction needs to know, I only need to know one of the IP addresses to make the link work. It's not necessary to have both IP addresses. For example, the Mac computer in Japan is probably on a DHCP connection, so it may receive a different uh, Ethernet address. I am at a non, I'm at a static IP address uh, in this computer in Las Vegas that will never change. So it's only necessary that they know my IP address. So here's the here's the Japan remote. You can see that I'm linked via green. Here's my latency, 65.7 milliseconds. And if I go to the incoming tab, I am receiving one audio feed. Um, for whatever reason, it's going into input 10 on their I.O. device. Um, I've, I, so I added the remote feed Japan. It's enabled. And as you can see from my VU meter, I am receiving some audio from, and this is the program audio locally from Japan. So I come down here, you check this little box um, because I, it's not a stereo feed. I just need one of those feeds. And importantly, play the incoming streams locally using the following device. And I have checked loopback to be the device that I am playing this audio through because I can't play directly to Unity Intercom. Um, the two pieces of software need a, a third party in between device to read and write. They can't read and write to each other. So that's where the genius of this loopback software comes in. Loopback is this program right down here. So if I click on loopback, I'm gonna launch it up. Loopback allows you to make, you know, basically virtual devices. So I've made a loopback device. I didn't call it anything special. I just made a two channel device because that's the, the lowest amount you can make. Um, I chose in Unity Connect, remember, to play my local source through loopback. Therefore, I didn't have to do anything fancy here. It was already receiving that audio, but I can, I could send the audio, so I could, you know, I can send audio from iTunes, the internet, QuickTime, or line in. You have all kinds of different options. In this case, I'm just gonna, I'm, and I set it up as a pass through. The audio is present here, and I drew a line right to the output channel. So I'm just going in the virtual pass through out channel one. And that is loopback. And that's the genius of loopback. So in my Unity Intercom server, that's it right here, I have chosen my input device to be loopback. Therefore, it is receiving audio on loopback, and I have set it up as audio input one to be the default audio feed. And what is happening in that case is people who are on Unity Intercom now, these people here who are logged in, you know, who, who are hopping uh, onto Unity Intercom, they are able to see the pro they're able to hear the program feed on their Unity clients as they're running around in Japan. 
it sounds like that was kind of complicated, but once you sort of catch on to what we're doing, we're, we're essentially sending local audio from Japan. And I'll, I'm going to bring up my screenshot again here. We're sending local audio from Japan uh, right here into some kind of IO device. If I had Dante, I wouldn't even need an IO device. But in this case, let's say it's analog XLR coming off of one of the local sound boards or something, and we're going into a Mac computer. That audio is being sent to another, well, into Connect more specifically. That audio is, is being sent into um, another Unity Connect and going through loopback like I just demonstrated, ultimately into the into Unity server, which is then available to all the clients all over the world who are logged into that particular server. In this case, the, the everybody local in Japan. So that is a great way to demonstrate how powerful having a locally based server with a static IP address running Unity Connect. And you could have any one of your 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 uh, your crews that are out in the in the world, if they have a Mac with them, you know, it could be just a MacBook running Unity Connect. They can plug in an I/O device, get local audio, broadcast that local audio anywhere in the world to where your server is located, and it becomes available as a program feed. Um, it's not always a program feed for Unity clients. Sometimes it's a we're broadcasting it back to another Unity Connect so that it can be outputted into another soundboard um, for use in broadcasting, for example. Um, something similar was done at the uh, the BBC Arctic Live show, where many different streams of environmental audio were broadcasted over Unity Connect and were received on another Unity Connect computer. So I think it was coming from Canada back to the BBC headquarters uh, in, in, uh, in England. And those you know, I, I think there were 30 something audio feeds. Those audio feeds were then able to be utilized in the television show. So Unity Connect is really, really powerful. Unity Connect and Unity, Ser or Unity Server and Unity Connect together make a very powerful team um, because there's, there's a lot that you can do with that. Um, and I can, we can talk a lot more about it. Um, there's, there's a lot of more, there's a lot more things you can do with it as well, but I just thought it would be helpful to kind of just throw a bunch of this information out there on YouTube um, so people can kind of digest it. And and because a lot of people are still not using this because I don't think people know you can do this. We have lots of customers who are, but I think the vast majority of customers are confused about how, how this is utilized and don't realize its powerful potential. Thanks.